Let's start our today's session, day 23 for CCNA 200 301. And in this session, we are going to talk about the wireless concepts. Okay. So the list might look long, but it's not that long. It's a <clears throat> very small topics are there here. Okay. So you all know what is wireless, right? Wireless means rather than connecting to your network via cable, you connect wirelessly. Okay, so wireless concepts, we will be discussing about how to connect an end user, how to connect an end user to your network. Generally, till now, I have been drawing like a switch and then I used to draw like this showing there are some cables connecting to the PCs, right? But now we are going to see how to connect these users wirelessly through the Wi-Fi, how they can connect to your network. Okay. So first thing we are going to talk about is the SSID. Okay. Whenever it comes to wireless, the first thing what we generally discuss is the SSID. So SSID stands for service set identifier. Service set identifier. Okay. This is nothing but the name given to the Wi-Fi name of your particular Wi-Fi. So if you're coming to my office, you can see the Wi-Fi name as Routegenix here. Similarly, at your home, you can keep any name as the Wi-Fi name. Now, if someone wants to connect to your Wi-Fi, they can simply click on the name and enter the password. If you have entered any password, they can connect using that password. If there is no password, it's an open Wi-Fi, it will get connected automatically. So the technical name of your Wi-Fi is actually SSID, Service Set Identifier. Now, some networks or some SSIDs can be hidden as well. Okay, that means they will be getting broadcasted. But if you open your phone Wi-Fi and check, you will not see the name here. Okay, let's say I have two networks. I have one network called as Routegenix. Okay. And then I have another network, I will say RG VIP. RG VIP here. Right? Just turn on. Okay. So there can be like I have two names, RG VIP, which is a better connection compared to Rob Jennings. Now I can keep this SSID hidden. So generally, if someone comes up and opens their Wi-Fi, they will only see Routegenix name, but they will not see RGVIP. What you need to do is you need to add this on your phone. When you're trying to connect to any Wi-Fi, you might be seeing like an add option. So you have to click add. There you have to manually enter the SSID and the password required. Then you will get connected to that Wi-Fi automatically. So if it is hidden, you will not know what it is until and unless whoever is the owner or who is a network administrator or engineer tells you that there is a hidden Wi-Fi as well. So if you are going into any organization, just opening and checking your Wi-Fi, you are seeing the name. That means those SSIDs are not hidden. Okay. Some people consider it as a security measure and want to have their SSIDs always hidden. here. Okay. <clears throat> Next thing is you are seeing this SSID on your phone, right? But how is that communication actually happening? That communication is happening through the a concept called as RF. RF stands for radio frequency. Okay, RF stands for radio frequency here. All right. Now, Radio frequency means these are some radio waves. If you remember, we used to listen to radio in old days like AM or FM, we used to say. So we cannot see those waves by our normal natural human eyes. We don't see those waves, but still somehow there is communication happening. Somehow you are receiving some uh, packets, you are receiving some audio file or something. So radio frequency or the RF waves are used for your communication purpose. When you are connecting to a Wi-Fi, the packet movement happening wirelessly, which is invisible to our eyes, is happening because of the radio frequency waves. Okay. Now, this RF 
actually this is how the whole wireless communication is happening all right now this rf strength the strength of this signal might get impacted a lot like you see the strength of your cable okay the strength of your physical cable if it is being roughly used like it's open in your office you are putting some stable on that one or you are rubbing it with your chair the wheels on your chair so on the strength of the cable gets damages slowly slowly and there will be a point come where the cable will get broken so your data transfer will not happen then okay you will you will find some interruptions in your connectivity now in the radio frequency we might not see exact like a break in the point but it has a strength and that strength might get impacted over here how the radio frequency strength can get impacted by certain interference interference means interfered by other radio frequency uh, channels okay or certain obstacles right like for example the wi-fi is in a different room and you are sitting in a different room let's say there are like multiple walls between you again that signal will get impacted to you okay if there are like 8 to 10 volts then you might not even see the signal properly again it depends on the router which you are using how strongly it is sharing the signal but still you need to understand that radio frequency waves have certain strength which might get uh, weak based on the interference and obstacles so the wireless network engineers who are working for wireless generally whenever they want to uh, they want to know where to connect an access point and so on where to connect our routers in simple word they perform a site survey okay they perform a site survey using different tools like a site survey will be done using different tools to identify the places or the dead zones where they are unable to cover the area using the RF radio, radio frequency waves. Based on the site survey, we need to do the planning where to connect access points. Let's say I'm telling you that uh, this is a mall and in this mall, we are going to give a free Wi-Fi. Now, it's your job to install the access points or the routers wherever you want to. So you need to perform a site survey and check which particular areas you are going to face issues for your radio frequency. At what particular area, there will be more interference or there are more obstacles or there are so many shops. So the shop which is exactly near or opposite the access point is having good strength. But three, four, five shops after that are not, ha not having proper strength. So you need to point out that kind of areas where you are say, having a dead zone all right now everything is happening based on radio frequency right now when you are connected to wi-fi nowadays with a lot of uh, wi-fi routers being advanced you might see two things here you might see something called as 2.4 g and you can see 5 g so this is first thing i want to clarify is this is different from your telecom 2G, 3G, 4G and 5G networks, what we use at our SIM cards in our mobile phone, okay? These are different things. Those are the generations, second generation, third generation, fourth generation, fifth generation and so on. These are gigahertz, 2 gigahertz, 5, 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz over here, okay? So when your radio frequency bands or radio frequency is waves are being sent over to you they will be sent with different different uh values or different different power like 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz initially uh, before 5 gigahertz came into place we had only 2.4 gigahertz here now in the 2.4 gigahertz <clears throat> i'm sorry <clears throat> excuse me in 2.4 gigahertz like there are so many devices getting connected, right? In your home, you have your phone, you have your laptop, your siblings or your friends, whoever are coming over, they have their phones or laptops. You have TVs connecting to Wi-Fi and so many different appliances as well connecting to Wi-Fi. So how is your Wi-Fi able to connect to all of those devices and able to provide them their respective services, whatever they require? So your RF waves are sent over 
something called as channels are sent over different channels over here. Okay. So let's say you have connected your phone to the Wi-Fi. Means your phone and you have connected to Wi-Fi. Okay. Similarly, you have your laptop, which is again connected to your Wi-Fi. All right. Consider this as your Wi-Fi router connected to your Wi-Fi. So your Wi-Fi is right now using a different channel. I will say channel one so to send you information and it's using different channel called as channel two to send information to exchange information with the laptop. Okay. Like if you were connecting your phone and laptop via cables, what you will do, obviously you will have two different cables, one cable from your phone, one cable from your laptop connecting to the router, right? But here we are connecting wirelessly. So even again to differentiate between the packets coming from your phone and from your laptop, Wi-Fi will be using something called as channels. There will be different type of channels being sent or being used. Now the problem will be the overlapping of channels. Means if I talk uh, a little bit more technicals about the channels, when it comes to 20 gigahertz, all right, when it comes to 20, uh, 2.4 gigahertz, I'm sorry. When it comes to 2.4 gigahertz, the channels, why we call it 2.4 gigahertz? Because the channel one will forward with a frequency called as 2.412 gigahertz. Okay, it will start forwarding with a frequency called as 2.412 gigahertz. And this will go till 2.432 gigahertz. Means how strong your connection is and how much amount of data you are requiring. If you are doing just small WhatsApp chat, then even 2.412 gigahertz of channel strength or speed is enough for you. If you are watching a video, then maybe 2.432 gigahertz of video might be required for you. Let's say you are using WhatsApp. Okay, you are using WhatsApp on your phone. I am using WhatsApp on my phone. So I'm just simply chatting, right? I'm sending small messages. A huge amount of data is not really required for that. My Wi-Fi will provide me with the first channel available and it's giving me 2.412 gigahertz over here. So what Wi-Fi do is they start the another channel. The next channel that is channel two will start from 2.417 gigahertz minimum. So you see the both the starting points have a point, I can say 0.5 or megahertz or simple words, five megahertz difference between both of them. Okay. So when I'm browsing YouTube, okay, this one goes till from 2.1, 2.437 gigahertz. Okay. So I'll simply write down here, five megahertz of difference is there between channels and each channel has 20 megahertz range. All right. So now I'm browsing YouTube here, right? On my laptop, I'm browsing YouTube. So let's say for YouTube, I need more amount of data, right? So assume that from channel two, my device has, or my router is allocating me channel two, right? And I am utilizing almost 2.420 gigahertz. This, this falls under the same range, right? 417 and I'm saying 420 gigahertz is being utilized by my laptop on the YouTube. Let's assume that I have started, uh, I have closed my WhatsApp and I have started watching YouTube again on my phone as well. And I'm streaming at very high quality of like 4K. Okay. I'm streaming at a high quality of 4K here. Then what will happen? My router has to increase the amount of speed or amount of strength it's given to me. 2.412 was basic. It was enough. Now my router will slowly start increasing and it will go till 2.413. Four, and let's say it's somehow going till 2.420 to accommodate my requirement. Now you see my laptop and my phone, both of them are using same channel now or same frequency. 
channels are different, but still the frequency used by them is same over here. This is called as overlapping. And this is where you will face issues like slowness in the video. Sometimes you might observe if you have a small connection, which is like 30 Mbps or 40, 50 Mbps and so on. You might observe that when you are downloading something on torrents on your laptop and you started browsing YouTube video or you're playing an online game, you will see some lag in your video or a drop in the quality of the video over there because the torrents are using the device or internet heavily. Okay, that is happening because of the overlapping of the channels. This is just an example what I am giving to you. It is called as a like overlapping issue. This leads to the interference. This is an example of an interference which you can take. Okay, so overall network performance will be impacted because of that. Right? Now, when we talk about 5 gigahertz, why was 5 gigahertz required or why it came into existence? Okay. When we talk about the 5 gigahertz here, what they did with 5 gigahertz was they increased the number of channels. The number of channels was increased. And also the power was increased from 2.4 to 5 means you can understand it's a high amount of power. So as the number of channels increased, then overlapping got reduced there. Okay. Because if you have more channels, the device will give different, different channels to different, different guys. So more amount of, <clears throat> sorry, more, more amount of strength will be given to each and every channel over here. Okay. So generally, you know, depending on the country again, and depending on the, your manufacturers, five gigahertz will have at least 24 channels to provide you. And someone can give you up to 165 or maybe with the latest technology up to 200 different channels as well. So that means whenever you see when you are connecting to any Wi-Fi, 5 gigahertz will always perform better as compared to 2.4 gigahertz. So that means we can say that 5 gigahertz has more non-overlapping channels as compared to 2.4 gigahertz here. All right. So that is something about our wireless. And one final thing what we can talk about is the encryption here. So obviously everyone is sending data via wireless and they are not connected to cable. So wireless you see is an open connectivity. Okay. Like unlike your cable network or the cabled connectivity, wired connectivity. If someone wants to connect to my network in my office, they have to physically be in my office and then Take the laptop, take a RJ45 cable, then connect to one of my switch or to my router directly. Whereas Wi-Fi, anyone standing outside my office can even try to connect to my Wi-Fi, right? What if they succeed by trying different methods of breaking into my Wi-Fi router? They succeed and they got connected to my network. Now they can see whatever the data I'm sending or I'm receiving. So like we have discussed in previous session about the man in the middle attacks, right? They can do that kind of attacks with me. They can just stay there and read all the data I'm sending. If I'm logging into my net banking website and I'm entering some password, they will be able to see that as well. Right? So for avoiding those kind of things, what the routers or the network wireless devices provide you is an option of encryption. Means your wire wireless network the data being sent can also be encrypted so that only specific devices which needs to process your data like your routers, your switches, your firewalls and all, they will be able to read the data. Still, if we talk from the security perspective, if some attacker who knows how to decrypt the data is accessing your network, we cannot do anything here. Okay, so we have to try to use the best encryption algorithm available. And as of now, the best encryption algorithm is called as WPA3, right? So, so those were some of the basic uh, wireless principles what I wanted to discuss with you.
let's proceed further where we can talk about our wireless architectures Wireless architecture means now we are going to see how exactly we connect or we configure our network wireless devices. Let's assume I have a router R1 connected to a switch here. Okay. Now I have some devices here, like let's say a PC. All right. Uh, this is considered a ground floor. Then I have some more devices here or PCs or laptops. Take them laptops only which is on my first floor. Now I want to connect these devices wirelessly. How can we do that? First thing is we use something called as an access point. Access point is used to connect to wireless devices. Okay. All these devices will connect wirelessly to your access point here. Similarly, I can have one more access point here to which all the devices will connect wirelessly. All right. Now, once they get connected to wirelessly to access point, it's access points responsibility to have them connected in your network. And how does the access point do that? By connecting to a, another device called as WLC, wireless LAN controller, connecting to them via cables, RJ45 cables. So wireless LAN controller will connect to your switch and to your router and everyone. So no matter how many access points you have, you can connect all of them to the wireless LAN controller here. All right. So you need to understand this simple thing. Access points are the one where your end devices get connected. And then access points are the devices which are for further connecting to the WLC here via the wired cable. Okay, this is a separate device called as WLC, which you will require to configure. That is wireless LAN controller. Now, when it comes to access points, you see access points works in different type of modes. Like here, I have mentioned access point modes. There are many different modes here. I'll point out two most important ones. The first one is called as autonomous mode. autonomous mode here. So when an access point is connected to autonomous mode, it does not require a WLC. Okay. It does not require a WLC. What you can do is let's say this, my router R1 is connected to the ISP, right? Okay. On the other side, if I have, a, if I want to run autonomous mode, let's say this is my access point. I can directly connect it to the ISP and then all my devices will be able to access uh, internet through the access point. So if access point is running standalone without WLC or without taking information from WLC, it is called as a autonomous mode. Okay. This type of solution is helpful in small organizations or small offices. Okay, we call it like Soho, right? Small office or home office. These type of places, this type of access point where you can suffice your connectivity with just one simple access point. We call it as a autonomous mode. So right now at your home, the router you are having, which is directly connecting to the ISP, right? It's nothing but an access point working in an autonomous mode. Now, as the public know that we router is required to access internet and to connect through Wi-Fi and all the sellers, manufacturers sell it saying an router. Okay. So it's an access point working in the autonomous mode. But if you see here in this kind of scenarios where I have multiple access points and I have multiple SSIDs, okay. Under the scenarios where I have multiple of things like access points, SSIDs and like different, different networks. Why we need multiple SSIDs? Let's say you are working for an organization which promotes BYOD. 
what is byod this is not a technical term this is a simple english term called as bring your own device where you are asking your employees to bring their own device come and sit and work okay so for call center guys you want to have a separate ssid for uh, network engineers separate ssid for sql database guys separate ssids where you are maintaining different different separate ssids and you have more than one access point multiple access points are required because number of devices are more let's say you have 100 end devices which are connecting to wi-fi okay there are multiple access points in that case you need to connect them to isp and those access points will be running in a mode called as lightweight lightweight mode or lightweight access points okay so these access points what we have drawn here can be called as lap's lightweight access points now what is lightweight access point lightweight means it does not do anything excuse me lightweight means it does not do anything you just simply have to connect it to a wlc and make sure you are having a dhcp server available in your organization a dhcp server this access point will first try to get an ip address as soon as it gets an ip address it will register itself with the wlc and in the wlc you will configure the access ssids and everything access point will be detected automatically you will configure the ssids and for each ssid you will configure a password as well okay so what ssid to broadcast what password to broadcast and what channels how to handle the channels and everything will be taken from the wlc you don't know anything you just simply connect it it will take a ip address and it will just start working with the wlc it's called as a lightweight access point and lightweight access points are the solution for enterprise organizations okay so we will be seeing lightweight access points only how to do that or how to configure them that we'll see in this session okay now till here it's good like access points lightweight autonomous mode and everything now let's see physically how we connect them actually we have discussed all of that already like here we have connected via a single cable to the wlc right this is good now you see the wlc is connecting here to the switch now, what type of configuration will you configure on this switch? Here, if we want to keep it as an access port, we can keep it as an access port, but then only one VLAN will be configured. But if you want to keep have multiple VLANs, like you are segregating the traffic, right? Just now I said, there are call center guys using their own laptop and you want them to be in a separate VLAN. This is the general practice. The network engineers, then database guys, then sales guys, all those guys, different, different teams, security guys, then collaboration guys, different teams are sitting. And for every team, you are having a separate Wi-Fi or a separate SSID. So those SSIDs are willing to work with different, different VLANs. All those configuration will be done in the WLC only, but the port which you are connecting to WLC needs to be a trunk port. Okay. Now just imagine I have another requirement here where I have like some cell phones, almost like 50 phones, okay? Then some laptops, I'll simply type lap here, some laptops over here, almost 30 laptops. And consider these are in 10 rooms, 10 different rooms, okay? Do you think one single access point will be enough here? no right one single access point will not be enough here so what we need to do in this case is we need to connect all our access points i have to write this as laptop actually so that you don't confuse all my different lightweight access points okay assume i'm using like four lightweight access points i will connect all of them to a switch first Okay, I'll connect all of them to a switch and then we connect these switches with each other. 
now it's your job to configure a traffic flow between the wlc and the access point here okay but these lightweight access points will all get connected to the switches now you see 50 phones 30 laptops and everything so there might be a requirement of link aggregation here also known as our port channel so if required in this case we configure port channel as well and the reason why i'm telling you this is i want you to know that it's not always compulsory for a lightweight access point to be directly connected to a wlc you see wlc will have limited ports again four ports or eight ports some costly wlc might have 16 ports as well okay more than that as well but in enterprise organizations, the number of access points will be high and number of WLCs will be less. Mostly one or two WLCs or some people might spend more and get three or four WLCs. That's it. They might have hundreds of access points. So it's not compulsory for you to connect access point directly to a WLC. You can connect it to a Cisco switch or any other switch and then somehow allow the reachability till the access point. Somehow means you know how to do that, right? Routing and switching and all those things. And allow the reachability till the access point. That is important here. So now let's have a look at the lab, what we can do. But before we do, do that, let me show you the type of scenario I'm going to set up. Okay. Now we are going to have a router R1. We will connect it to a switch and we will connect a WLC to this switch, wireless LAN controller. Okay. We will also connect a PC, a simple PC, because WLC you have to configure via GUI. Okay. So this, from this PC, we will be able to reach the WLC. We'll set up IP address on the WLC management IP and then we will try to reach the WLC from the PC. All these are Ethernet cables only, nothing special. To so this WLC, I will connect a lightweight access point and I will try to connect this lightweight access point to a laptop. Okay, let's say laptop via Wi Fi. So, laptop will connect it to light, get connected to lightweight access point via Wi Fi and then it will try to reach the router one here. And I will also have a DHCP server here. Okay. I will also have one DHCP server. Using the DHCP server, we'll try to provide everyone IP addresses. Okay. Now, let's say I'm going to configure 1.100 here on this interface. Then we will see how to uh, work with our setup. So let's get started here. Now, first thing I will take a router and I will configure that router here. CLI. Okay, we'll fast forward. Let's say no. Enable configure terminal host RG router. Interface. Let's see the interface. What we get on this router is gigabit zero by zero, right? Or first, let's connect the devices, then we'll come to the routers. I'll have a switch here. Then, like I said, a PC is required. And a server is required. I'll take a laptop as well. And in the wireless devices, we will take this one, LAPPT, that is lightweight access point. And we will take a 3504 wireless LAN controller. Okay, simple thing, simple connectivity. I will connect the LAPPT to the WLC. All right, WLC to the switch, server to the switch, PC to the switch, and router also to the switch here. Okay, now first let's get rid of the router's configuration. We'll say interface gigabit 0 by 0, IP address 192.168.1.100. 1.100, this is supposed to be the default gateway for every device. Okay. Now, next thing, what we are going to do is we are going to configure our server. 
we will go to server and first assign it an IP address. Let's say 192.168.1.1. Okay, 1.1 is it's saying that address is already used in the network because all the packet tracer WLCs have 1.1 IP address assigned to them automatically. So let's go with 1.2 here. Default gateway will be 192.168.1.100. My router's IP address. This is required because if you don't assign IP address to the server, it won't communicate, right? And for my personal satisfaction, I'll simply ping and check as well. Okay. Server is reachable to the router. Perfect. Let's go to services and set up our DHCP. Okay. We will say RG pool default gateway as 192.168.1.100. DNS server, we need not give what I want to give 1.100 only. Starting IP is 1.1. And WLC address, if you want, you can mention. I'll mention as 1.1 here. Add. So I'll say start with the IP address of 1.3 because 1.1 is my wireless LAN controller's address that is coming by default. And server, I have assigned 1.2, right? We'll start with 1.3 here. And I'll simply. So click on that, say three and save. Okay. Now we have given our DHCP configuration and so DHCP is perfect. Let's get started with our wireless configurations. I'll go to this WLC. And if you see in WLC, there is nothing much we can do. No modules, nothing. We can simply click on config tab. Here you are seeing settings. Okay. It just shows you the display name of the server. There are gigabit, zero, one, two, three different interfaces, but there's nothing there to assign them IP or everything because we have to configure it via GUI, graphical user interface. IP address is already taken 192.168.1.1, but the subnet mask is something different, 240. I'll configure it as zero. Default gateway is 192.168.1.100, okay? This is enough. Now my WLC will be reachable. From where? From the PC. Let's go to PC, desktop, IP, and we have DHCP server, right? Just click on DHCP server. We got our IP address available here. We got 1.3. Let's open command prompt and do some pings. Let's try to reach our PC. One and this one dot, uh, router, we are reachable. Let's try to reach the WLC. Are we reachable to WLC? No. Yes, we are. Okay, the first packet was lost because of R. You need to remember your basics, all right? So the first packet was lost because of R, and we are able to communicate with WLC as well. This is important before you proceed further. If you are unable to reach your WLC, you won't be able to configure it, okay? Now we are reachable to WLC. From the PC, you see here PC, I'm going to click on web browser. Okay, this might be a little bit slow for the start. Now web browser is open here. I will type HTTP colon forward slash forward slash. I'm typing HTTP. I'm not going with the secure HTTPS. I'm just typing HTTP. Then 192.168.1.1. Enter key. Now I have already hit enter, but the first time when WLC boots, it takes some time to give you this particular page. Okay. I can try with the fast forward multiple times and here PC, you say still, it's going to take some time. Now we have our page. This is how it's showing 3500 series wireless LAN controller. Welcome. Please start by creating an admin account. Now. I'll just say username is admin, password. <clears throat> password, I cannot just simply give admin here. Okay, let me type admin and I'm admin. Then I'll click on this icon here. I'll click start. It says, please match the requested format. It says contain at least six characters, uppercase, lowercase and everything. So I'll go with capital C I S C O at the rate one, two, three. Capital C I S C O at the rate one, two, three. Start. Now we are setting up our controller. This is the first time we are logging in, right? It's asking me name, system for name. What you want to name this controller? 
I will say RG WLC, right? Then management IP address, what you want to give. Management IP is 1.1. Subnet mask 255.255.255.0. I can give any other management IP as well. Okay. So once I set up this and give management IP as something else like 1.200. After that, if I want to access the WLC, I should give 1.200 here. Let me show you that. I'll say 1.254 is the management IP. Default gateway is 192.168.1.100. And management VLAN is 1. Okay. With this information, I can click next. Remember, I have given the management IPS under 254. Now, see, it's asking for security. That is your enter name for your network. This is where you enter your SSID. If I'm just hovering my mouse over this question mark, it says enter name for wireless network, that is SSID, up to 32 characters. Let's say RG Wi Fi. Okay. Now, security type, what you want, personal enterprise, we can just keep personal as of now. We don't really need to get into that level right now. <coughs> okay. Passphrase is your password, what you want to give. I'll simply say Cisco at the rate 123. Cisco at the rate 123. Okay. Nothing else. Just click next and leave it as it is this advanced settings. Just say next. We are done. It's giving us the page to confirm the settings and apply like review, whatever you have given management IP is 124 and everything. I can simply say apply. But it says system will reboot. We'll click OK. Done. System will start to reboot. Now what you can do is you can simply do fast forward a little bit till you see the green lines here. Then go to the PC and enter the url once again this time we will say https okay remember just for setting up the wlc first time when you are logging in you have to go with the http that too in the packet tracer after that you will go with https 192.168.1.254 enter key and this is the page you get wireless lan controller please click login to enter username and password we click login Username is admin, password is CISCO. Login. Oh, sorry, my bad. Admin, password is Cisco. I think I forgot the password I gave. Okay, yeah, it was Cisco123, right? At the rate123. Done. And this is what your LAN controller looks like. It's saying like, 150 access points are supported and these two ports are currently connected. Here you have your all information, software version, everything, uptime. Okay. 802.11 is the open standard name for the radio frequency used for Wi-Fi. Okay. Like 802.1Q was for STP. Here we have 802.11. All right. Now, I can go to wireless and we have to be patient when working with packet tracers, WLC. Here, I will be able to find all my access points. Currently, it's not showing me anything. It's showing me just zero. Let's set up our access point now. I'll minimize this and click on the access point. Okay. You see here, the access point, zoom in. This is how it looks like and currently it's off because in packet tracer you have to take this power cable and leave it here then it turns on. Config mode is already on DHCP so you need not do anything here. Okay, gigabit ethernet zero and dot 11 radio. We need not do anything with this lightweight access point. Like I said, it's just a plug and play device. We connected our access point and it started working. Let me close this now. Okay, you see this port is up. Now, I need to go to my laptop. In the laptop, in the packet tracer only again, you see here, this is a fast Ethernet line card. Now, I need to turn it off by clicking this port, remove this line card, and take this one, WPC300N, connect it here, and turn the laptop on once again. 
okay just wait for few seconds then we will be able to see some lines here actually we won't be able to see sorry my bad because we didn't connect to wi-fi right we just connected the wireless card we did not connect to wi-fi now this laptop i am not going to assign any ip address i'm going to keep it on dhcp only why because it needs to get connected to wi-fi automatically and get an ip address right so on laptop click on this icon pc wireless Okay, now it's saying no association with access point. Click on connect here, connect tab, and just refresh once. Okay, so we are supposed to see a Wi Fi name here. It's showing me like a default profile already available, but we don't want to connect to default. We want to connect to Wi-Fi, right? Let's go ahead and check what's happening at our WLC. We'll open PC and here I'll simply refresh. Okay. Now I can see as I refreshed, I can see there is a lightweight access point available whose IP address is, you see all this information is there. We don't need that. IP address is 1.4. Let me click on this lightweight. It's saying feature is not supported. We cannot do anything here. We need not do anything actually. <clears throat> After some time, here is my WLAN called as RG Wi Fi. This RG Wi Fi will be uh, available in the lightweight access point. Okay, so here, if you want to change your password or anything, you can simply go to security and you can change your passwords here. Okay, it's saying like what your password you want. I forgot this password. So let me set CISCO at the rate one, two, three. All right, we have done this. We just say apply. So from this WLC only, from this WLC only, we need to configure everything we want to do. Okay. Now let's just close this WLC. I don't need this anymore. I'll fast forward some time. Then I'll go to laptop, PC wireless, connect, refresh. Okay. So it says it's inactive. Why like that? I have connected everything. We have powered on as the laptop, wireless interface, everything is good. Okay. So once we have our laptop in place and connected, you will be able to see your RG Wi Fi uh, icon here. And once you click that, it will ask you for password. Then you will have the option to enter the password which is currently not working mm -hmm. so. let's go to laptop again pc wireless connect select wireless network to proceed when we refresh, this is the issue we are having right now. Okay. So as soon as you see here, you click and you enter your password, you will be able to access everything. Right. Now, this is the issue again with the packet. So this generally works, but sometimes it doesn't. So we cannot do anything. Mm -hmm. Let me turn off the laptop and turn on again. Desktop, PC wireless, connect. Okay, so all of our process, what we have done till here is perfectly fine. Nothing else to do on that.
right? Just the thing is, we are facing issues with this packet tracer here. One final last try, what I want to give is, I want to do two things. I want to take a laptop here. And I want to take a wireless device like autonomous or let's say just AP access point, connect this one as well to the WLC. And on this laptop, I will power it off, remove this, connect the WPC 300M, power on once again. Okay, you see again some issue with this lightweight access point, which is not taking by default. So my device is automatically connected to this access point here. Let's say config, nothing to do with this access point as well again. Let me check the laptop's IP address, IP config, we got 1.6 here, right? Let me try to ping 192.168.1.100, we are reachable to the router as well okay again some issues with the packet tracer where i'm unable to connect to this lightweight access point so okay ignore that you can take this simple access point and simply connect it you'll be able to see let me delete this device and let me check once again on the laptop pc wireless connect it's, it's not showing here so the actual process of verification would be when you open your laptop and go to the PC services, you should be able to see the RG Wi-Fi logo here. Once you see that, you enter the password and you will be able to get connected to that. All right. Nonetheless, this was our uh, wireless discussion for today. If you are interested in learning about wireless then what you need to do is in the CCNP Enterprise, there is a course. In CCNP Enterprise, there is a course called as wireless implementation, something like that. Let's see, CCNP Enterprise, trainings and certification. Scroll down here. This is the course which you can do, ENWL. LSI, demonstrate your skills with wireless network implementation. Okay. In this course and in this course, ENW SLD, these are the two courses, 300, 425 and 300, 430. These two courses will help you get a, a build a career in the wireless environment. You see, if I check the exam topics here, you will see the first topic itself is wireless site survey, like try to collect the design requirements and evaluate constraints, okay? Then wired and wireless infrastructure things. There are so many things, RF profiles, different profiles, what you are seeing. Then what is data, voice and video and everything, okay? High availability features through lag or switch over, all those things are available here for you. So this was about our wireless discussion required for CCMA 200301, all right? With that, we can stop our today's session here.